so much for that. Great song, great song. Welcome to Unity of Tucson, our spiritual community where we celebrate love each and every week. It's such a joy to have you here on this beautiful, beautiful day. Yes, yes, yes. I, uh, of course, want to offer what it is, what our vision here at Unity of Tucson is. Um, it is this. We envision a place of peace, beauty, and power where spiritual principles are taught and practiced within an ever-growing and dynamic congregation. And here are some of the beautiful faces of our dynamic congregation, our spiritual family. We are here to know love. We are here to be love. We are here to express love. That's all we are here to do. So join me with in doing that. My eyes are wide and open. My eyes can see. My mind is filled with knowing. My mind believes I am awake. I am awake. Once you know You are the light. My heart is clear and growing. My heart can see. My soul.
close your eyes The truth that cannot be denied You are the light, you are the light, you are the light You are the light, you are the light, you are the light You are the light, you are the light, you are the light You are the light, you are the light, you are the light <laughs> Yes, 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 you are the light Good morning once again. Welcome to a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning here at Unity of Tucson. As I said, we are a spiritual community, and it is my decision that uh, I am here in my own personal expression of ministry to teach practical tools for a better life, because it is my belief that as we engage practical spiritual tools in our lives and as part of our expression, life gets better all around. I mean, I say every week, every, every day, during the week, when I do my Mindful Moments live on Facebook, I say, you know, engaging spiritual practice on a consistent and regular basis just makes life better. So what do you say we do that? What do you say we engage spiritual practice and precipitate our own spiritual evolution? We can do that. Let's read together and concretize within our hearts the words of our mission statement here at Unity of Tucson. Within the principles of unity, we are a ministry of love, inspiration, learning, wholeness, acceptance, and joy that empowers all people to embrace their divine nature. Your nature is divine, for there is nothing that is not divine. And in understanding this, I hold firm to the tenets of my approach to this spiritual practice, and it is to offer this as my consistent reminder that we live within these principles. Love only, forgive everything, remember who you are. And in doing so, I know a truth about you. I know that you are the light. I've been, we've sung a lot of that today. You are the light, you are love, you are life. You are magnificent. You are magnificent. I believe spiritual transformation is possible, and it is our work to awaken to our spiritual magnificence and let it show, shine forth in our physical magnificence. I would love for you to use the chat for just a moment. Take a moment to acknowledge the community, the spiritual family that are watching with you today, whether you're watching live on Facebook or on YouTube. Utilize the chat function there and reach out and uh, say hello. Greet your friends and neighbors and let them know their magnificence. Do so in your own unique, perfect way. And I do want to acknowledge the uh, few people who are helping this morning in allowing us to be unfolding in this virtual paradigm and say, I see you. I'm grateful for you. I know that you are magnificent, absolutely magnificent. And I see the magnificent, beautiful faces of this band. I know that you are magnificent. Hmm. As those messages proliferate and you reach out to your friends and neighbors, in your own time when you're ready, just allow yourself to take that feeling of love and recognize it as the feeling at the core of your beingness. I'm going to state this month's affirmation and after I state it, it'll come up on your screen as well, but after I state it, you can use any part of this to allow yourself to center into the notion of what this means. The affirmation this month is, today, I let go of limitation. I let go of fear. I welcome the magnificent unfoldment of infinite potential. Today, I let go of limitation. I let go of fear. I welcome the magnificent unfoldment of infinite potential. Now take a moment to see what resonates with you. If it's safe and comfortable for you to close your eyes, I invite you to do so.
Let yourself have this moment of contemplation, of deepening, of understanding. Today, I let go of limitation. I let go of fear. I welcome the magnificent unfoldment of infinite potential. Allowing the body to relax, letting go of any unnecessary tension. Finding yourself in that easeful, gentle space. Deepening. Acknowledging the love that is flowing forth from within. Allowing the gentle rhythm of love to be in its perfection unfolding right here and right now for just a moment in the silence. In the silence there is peace. In the silence there is unspoken joy. In the silence there's release as my heart opens up to the voice I awake to these precious moments I hear all that could ever be said and right here in this holy silence I find God I find Thank you. 
going to invite Karen to join me. Good morning, Karen. Grateful to have you here. Karen is assisting me this morning with our Lighting the Flames of Faith ceremony, our ceremony that we engage in every week, this ritual to honor the faith traditions and spiritual paths of the world. This month, as I started last week, I talked about the golden rule and what is the commonality of the languaging around the golden rule in, any, in all of these faith traditions. And one of the thoughts that came up, and, and, and I have had some conversations around the golden rule with some people this week, and when, when we think about and speak about the golden rule, here's what I think we need to root ourselves into. What is the cause behind the expression of the golden rule? Because it's very easy to get lost in this idea of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? That actually kind of puts it out in the world of form. But what is the causative doing within yourself? What causes the respect you seek? What causes the expression of love you seek? Let yourself root into that idea and acknowledge the golden rule, maybe a different way today. So for each candle that we light, we are acknowledging the golden rule for each of these traditions. And so we light a candle for the Tao. And in the Tao, it is written, Regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain, and your neighbor's loss as your own loss. We light a candle for the shamanic traditions. We are as much alive as we keep the earth alive. We light a candle for Hinduism. This is the sum of duty. Do not do to others what would cause pain if done to you. We light a candle for Judaism. What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. We light a candle for all forms of Buddhism. Treat not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. We light a candle for all forms of Christianity. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. We light a candle for all forms of Islam. Not one of you truly believes until you wish for others what you wish for yourself. We light a candle for Baha'i. Lay not on any soul a load that you would not wish to be laid upon you, and desire not for anyone the things you would not desire for yourself. We light a candle for all forms of new thought. If you want more love, be more loving. Life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what they are thinking. And there is a candle, it's already been lit. <laughs> We're a candle ahead, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and we have lit a candle now already for all those who may be as yet unaware of the power of spirit in their lives. And we affirm the integrity of all creation and the inherent equity of all beings. This final candle we light is a candle, the healing candle, which represents the healing of any circumstance that requires divinity to be revealed. For that is the true nature of healing, the revelation of the God essence, the life force at the core of all creation. And so this is your candle for whatever is in your mind and in your heart that requires the light. Thank you. The candle here to your left is our peace candle. And we keep the peace candle consistently illuminated with the understanding that it represents the consistent illumination of peace in our hearts. And as we allow that peace in our hearts to expand and become expressed in our lives, we are proliferating peace in the world. So that's why we keep this, lamp, this candle consistently illuminated. Let's honor this candle by reading together the prayer for world peace. Divine love indwells each person and radiates from one to another. Harmony is established and peace begins to reign in the world.
I'm just taking a moment to feel that peaceful energy that we've created. I trust you feel it virtually as well. I can tell you we feel it in the room. Hmm. The featured song today uh, is me going back to my roots and uh, it's a song written by one of the luminaries in the New Thought music world, Daniel Namod. And he put this on an album that he released in 2004, and I found my way into my first New Thought uh, spiritual center in 2005. So it really is literally like right at the beginning of my time there. This is very first day. There was a day, and I remember it well, when I could always tell what was right for me. Such a day, not so long ago, when I would always know I was safe as can be. I'm going back to that very first day. There was a day, before my faith hit the ground, before the shame came around, before the walls came down. Such a day, I might have been just a child, but boy, I knew how to smile more than once in a while. I'm going back to that very first day. I'm going back to that very first day. Cause on that day, I was at peace. I did everything with the greatest of ease. On that day, I knew joy. All the world was a bright blue baby's toy. I'm going back to that very first day. the anger ruled, before the guns in school, before the wars for fuel. Such a day, when children danced in the street, when all had plenty to eat, when every soul was free. We're going back to that very first day. We're going back to that very first day. Cause on that day, we were at peace. We did everything with the greatest of ease. On that day, a bright blue baby's toy we're going back to that very first day it doesn't need to be so hard to live this life we haven't strayed so far our souls just wait for us to We are going back to that very first day. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to start with this lyric today. It doesn't need to be so hard to live this life. We haven't strayed so far. Our souls just wait for us to decide. What a profound lyric. It doesn't need to be so hard to live this life. We haven't strayed so far. Our souls just wait for us to to decide what is it waiting for us to, what are our souls waiting for us to decide? How many of us are holding back in our lives? It's a good question to ask. What are our souls waiting for us to decide? You know, I, I mentioned it earlier and I mentioned it every single day on the Mindful Moment that 
it is through the engagement of spiritual practice that my life has gotten better. And so that is why it is important to me to allow an opportunity for others to perhaps get a little bit of what I've gotten. That's my only purpose in ministry, is to be in that when Harry met Sally paradigm and live my life to such a degree that people will say, oh, I'll have what he's having. (laughs) And I have incorporated tools in my life, and I'm here to teach those tools to help everyone step into the most magnificent life that they can potentially live. And you have infinite potential in the expression of your life. So what are our souls waiting for us to decide? It's a rhetorical question. Perhaps they are truly waiting for us to remember who we are, to remember the truth of our being. How many of us struggle? How many of us struggle loving ourselves just as we are? I went through a period of that struggle myself. Sometimes I forget. You ever forget? Sometimes I forget the truth of my beingness. And that's when life seems to fall apart and life becomes a struggle. Was it always this way? No. But I think about that song. What were you like as a child? What were you like as a child? You know, when we're children, when we are born, I believe, you know, well, at least I can speak from my own experience. When I was a child, my days were quite carefree. I I, I had a perception that my life was easy. I had this perception of ease, even if it wasn't easy. I didn't consider that the circumstances of my life were hard in any way. I just lived life. So it brings up the question for me, at what point did I buy into, and let's ask ourselves this question, at what point did we buy into, and it is something we've bought into, what point did we buy into the notion that life is hard? At what point did we buy into This idea that the greatest benefits of our life follow the challenges in our life. At what point did we buy into this idea that through struggle we could prove our value to the world? Because I see a lot of those ideas being proliferated and expressed and going around and people living their lives from this concept that, oh, It's going to get better, and boy, when it gets better on the other side of this struggle that I'm having, boy, my life will have value. Your life has value right here and right now. At what point did we leave that notion, that concept behind? Because as children, I don't think we doubt our value. Children are very precocious. They have no doubt around their value in this world. Perhaps what it is is we've left the wonder, the approach to life through the eyes of wonder. Perhaps we've left that behind on some, some level. I love that, you know, that saying, all who wander are not lost. And I have actually changed it for myself sometimes to say, all who wonder are not lost. Because I think, too, when we live through the eyes of wonder, people look at us and go, boy, they're really out to lunch. Their heads are in the clouds. Like, what's going on with them, right? We're not lost. We're living the most imaginative life. And when we live within that imagination, life flows forth in a magnificent way. So there is value in the approach to life, seeing through the eyes of wonder just as children do. And when we lose that, and, you know, I go back and forth. Sometimes I lose that. I look for ways to regain it. How about you? When I was a child, I used to love to play dress up. And, you know, I think there are some children out there who, uh, who, who love that expression of imagination. I think it was a pre- precursor to my previous career in the theater. 
you know, in the theater, it's a lot of dress up and a lot of living other people's lives, which there's a whole talk around that, but not, to, not for today. So I used to love to play dress up and live within the imagination. And my sister and I, we would put on these shows and do these lip sync performances, mainly lip sync performances. We never, it's funny because I'm a singer now, but I never really sang live in these shows that we would put on. We would do these lip sync performances. We would sell tickets, sell tickets to the neighborhood. And we would set, we, I remember we had this, old door and we had this old door and we put it up on cinder blocks and that's how we created a little stage out in the side yard and we would sell tickets to the neighborhood and boy they would come and they would be very kind and watch our shows and applaud and I'm sure that they were thinking oh this is not going anywhere it's not Broadway worthy that's for sure but I look back on that and how carefree we were we didn't we didn't really think about the critics we didn't think about the criticisms of the people that were watching, and a lot of actors could learn from that. It was just a carefree life. It was just a carefree life. And I look back on that life, and I have great admiration for who that person was. And so this song, there was a day when I led this carefree life, and I get to decide the degree to which I embody and express that carefree life now and ever more. The only thing that holds me back is me. When I look back at my childhood, it brings great thoughts of joy. What can you look back upon in your childhood that brings thoughts of great joy to you? Just allow yourself to acknowledge that there is something within that. There's something within your past that brought great joy, and to what degree can you allow that to be embodied and expressed now in your new life as the person you are now? How can you begin to reclaim that joy? We live in a society, we live in a culture that offers us many, many opportunities to reconsider the life we are living. We are met with opportunities to reconsider the life we are living in the words of others, in the reflections in the world of form. We live in a world where we are subject to the opinions and decisions of others to the degree that we allow that. And when we allow that, we can easily lose sight of our truth. And what happens is when we lose sight of our truth, we diminish ourselves. Our only responsibility in this life is to show up authentically. And I think that our authentic selves are solely rooted in one thing and one thing only. Love. We talk in classes sometimes about divine will and human will and the willpower and these, these concepts of, you know, what it is that life wants for itself in its expression as us. And I think ultimately it's knowing who we are and living authentically from that point of view that we are love. Sometimes we're led astray. And we limit the expression of that love. We limit, the, we limit that expression of love. There are times when we can take on this need for approval from others. And when we take on that need for approval of others, we are led astray. It begins to outweigh our expression of uniqueness. Have you ever had, here's what I've, it, it, this is, I refer to it as this. Have you ever had a recognition that you might have an inner saboteur looping in your mind? There have been times in my life where that saboteur has mentioned to me or repeated on a loop saying, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not seasoned enough. That's when I get all the time because I'll tell you what, People look at me and they say, you're a minister? Because there's this idea that ministers are 
of a certain age. <laughs> and that you cannot be, you cannot, you cannot embody the wisdom of ministry until you have reached a certain age. And, see, and, and I'll tell you what, the people in the room are laughing because there's truth to that, right? People have this idea. They say, You're, you, you look so young. You're not seasoned enough to be a minister. But who decided, this is the question, who decided that there needed to be any, any sort of level of expression of my life that was, that was related to what you think to make me worthy of the life I am living? And this is the question we can all be asking of ourselves. To what degree do we take on the opinions and judgments of others to bolster us, to make our lives seem worthy? Does any of this sound familiar? Is there an inner saboteur that you are living with? Perhaps you're living with it right now. I've had that experience recently, but the good news is it is through spiritual practice that I embody the principles and I put the tools to use to allow myself to address the words of that inner saboteur and say, I know who I am. I remember who I am. I am the full expression of love, and there is no opinion of anyone else that can diminish the truth of my being. But here's one thing that happens when you let that inner saboteur hold stock in your mind, and that's what it's doing. It is holding stock in your mind. When it does that, the circumstances of your world and the expressions of your life show up to support the messages that the inner saboteur is telling you. Because what we think, what we believe, creates the expression of our lives. So if we are holding on to these ideas of you're not good enough, I guarantee you the things are going to show up in your life that say you're not good enough. If you are holding on to the things and the ideas that say you're not smart enough, then what's going to happen is the circumstances of your world are going to begin to support that idea of you're not smart enough. If you are holding on to the idea in your own mind that you are not seasoned enough, you are not wise enough, you are not anything enough, then the circumstances of your world are going to show up to support that notion. So the point of change is you. The point of change rests entirely with you. It can show up as many things. One of the most detrimental can be those opinions of others, right? I want to acknowledge that those opinions are only showing us reflections of our inner life. And when we understand that that's the paradigm, when we understand that our entire experience and expression of the world is a reflection of our inner life, that we don't have to go out there and coerce the outside world to do or be anything for us, that the thing we need to address is that idea, those things that are within, then we have up-leveled our awareness and life shows up accordingly. Now, there are degrees of belief. How deeply do you believe the ideas of your inner saboteur? I've had the experience of letting those things, ah, oh, you ready for this? I've had the experience of letting those things become purity tests for the way I live my life. Tests which, which I have taken on to prove to myself my value. And when we let those purity tests show up, they can keep us from fully participating in life. Are you smart enough? What's the answer to that? Are you spiritual enough? What's the answer to that? Are you old enough? What's the answer to that? Are you young enough? What's the answer to that? Because if you look at the world, it'll tell you all the answers that you probably don't want to hear. Any question that challenges your value, that shows up in your life, any question that shows up in your life that challenges your value might be a purity test which you have embodied. So ask yourself this question. What are the purity tests that I have embodied that are keeping me from living fully? Now, there may not be an immediate answer, but it's a good question for contemplation. What are the purity tests which I have embodied that are keeping me from living my life fully? And as answers come up for you, what I'm going to encourage you to do is to say 
to yourself, I recognize and know the wholeness of God is available to me, through me, and as me at all times. That I am not relegated to the limitations of those purity tests, those ideas which limit my expression. The wholeness of God is available to me, through me, and as me at all times. In what way might it be limiting to accept these tests and apply them to our lives? Let go of them. They're not required. Anytime we accept a test as necessary to our value, we diminish our light. Anytime we accept a test as necessary to our value, we diminish our light. Our work is to show up authentically. And, and, this is the part where it gets a little tricky sometimes. If our work is to show up authentically, then we must also have the willingness to allow others to do the same free of judgment. Because we can turn that idea, we can turn that question around and ask the question this way. What are the purity tests we require of others to let them participate in our lives? That's a question for contemplation for sure. To what degree do we diminish others in our own minds because they don't meet our expectations? To what degree do we think they aren't wise enough or they aren't attractive enough or they aren't spiritual enough to be participants in our lives? And I know everybody's out there going, oh, but I'm different. But there are things that happen at the level of awareness and below the level of awareness that are operating and showing up as the expression of your life. So it is up to us to pull those things at the below that are below the level of awareness to the level of awareness so that we can ask these questions and become more motivated with the love that is in our hearts to be fully expressed and let go of the opinions and judgments that we have of others and when we do that we let go of the opinions and judgments we have of ourselves and life gets better all i'm ever talking about life getting better Is it possible that those questions, those questions, you know, uh, you know, oh, is this person wise enough to be part of my life? Is it possible that those questions that we have of others are actually the questions that we have of ourselves? Do you have the, the tenacity, and it is, it takes tenacity, do you have the tenacity to show up, to come as you are authentically in this expression of life? And then ask yourself, what does that look like? If I let go of the opinions of others, if I go back to that very first day, and I'm not talking about when I was born into this incarnation, I'm now talking about going back to that point at which I was a first cause idea that showed up free of any of these considerations. A day when I was at peace, a day when we were all at peace, preceding that physical childhood. Let's go back to being the first cause of our life. And that first cause is what? Love. There was a time, there was a day, before we allowed the effects to determine the course of our lives and expression. There was a day before we allowed any of that stuff to take hold. Lao Tzu says, care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. Care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. Let go of the limitations that you hold in your own mind that are keeping yourself imprisoned by yourself. Let go and know who you are. You are a shining light on a hill whose brilliance should never be diminished. Remember who you are. Celebrate who you are. Every day, every way, come as you are. Namaste. Hmm. And if you think you're getting away with no homework, (laughs) there is homework, and it's written homework this week. 
I would love for you, actually, I, you know, it's hard because I can't follow up to say, how did your pictures of God go last week? Did everyone get up every morning and draw your picture of God? How did it go? I see, some, I see Laura raising her hand out there. So this week's homework is this. Write out the questions you ask of yourself and others that might suggest a purity test. Each day, you know, maybe carry around a notebook. If you find yourself, oh, this might be a purity test, write out what that question is. And then ask yourself of that question. Ask yourself these ideas. Is it loving? Is it kind? And is it true? And allow yourself to live within that exploration. I'm going to invite you now to reflect on any kernel of truth or idea that you get to walk away with today. Let it be fully present in your heart right here and right now. Gently, easefully, and effortlessly relaxing into this moment and knowing that you are in charge. Every morning, the light keeps getting brighter as I wake up to the truth. Every day, I'm feeling so much lighter, and the world seems fresh and new. What I was taught, and the way that I thought, stopped serving me long ago. start the new and so I'm walking away from the thinking that held me for so long today
right in line with our theme this month, release, 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 and embrace, repeat. <laughs> Because we are in this consistent cycle, this circulation, this infinite circulation of loving flow. And sometimes we need to release and then embrace and then repeat that process, right? Uh, con uh, considering the infinite flow and cycle of circulation, uh, this is the time in our service where we uh, do our offering. And so why do we give? We are wanting to be here, of course. And so I'm going to invite you to take out whatever it is or in whatever way that you are choosing to give to Unity of Tucson today, I'm going to invite you to allow yourself to resonate with the gratitude that you feel for this community, for this spiritual offering, and for what we are here to do. Gratitude for the vision, the mission, and, you know, allowing yourself to resonate with your own sense of gratitude. Giving and receiving are part of that infinite circulation. They are the same thing that, you know, as we give, we receive. As we receive, so we give. Money is God in action. And there are many ways to participate in this activity. You can uh, go online and, 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 and utilize the, uh, the button for giving, which is on our website at unitytucson.com. Uh, it says donate right there. You click that button, and it will take a credit card or a debit card. Super easy, and it is safe and secure to be able to do that. You can call to the office during our regular office hours, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and you can utilize your debit or credit card over the phone and offer a, offer a con contribution that way. You can also send in a check, and uh, all the information on our address, all of that, it's in the description field of this video. Let's read together the divine givingness statement as an affirmation of the reasons that we give and the love in our heart that we have as we give. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I joyously contribute to my spiritual center, knowing that it goes forth to heal, prosper, and bless and returns to me multiplied abundantly. I thankfully acknowledge God as my source. And this is, you can get up and do a little movement on this. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within Gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. 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 Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me. Gratitude to the right of me. I am so grateful. Now, I do have people ask this sometimes. When I say to the left of me, why do I go to my right? It's because, you know, when we're teaching dance in theater, uh, we always, the, the instructor always has to mirror whatever you are going to be doing. So if you're out there and you're following along, my right is your left. That's why I do that. Because I have people ask, well, you say to the left of me, but you're going to your right. And then you say to the right of me and you're going to your left. So that's why, it, we, that's why I do it that way. Because <laughs> I am being a mirror to you. Uh, just as a reminder, we are still planning on Sunday, October 4th as being the beginning of our potential, potential uh, provided the numbers keep going in the right direction, uh, we're going to be doing a limited capacity reopening of the center of the church to have people in the room. The guidelines, uh, well, I was going to say the guidelines are being prepared, but a lot of them have actually been now written out in terms of what that's going to look, out, uh, look like. Do keep an eye out in your email for updated information, because the question I get most of most these days is how do I register? Well, you will be able to register online. It'll be on our website. You'll be able to click a button. You'll be able to choose the seat you want to sit in. And uh, there are, yeah, right? It's gonna, it's like assigned seating. We're, we're, we're big time here. Um, 
And uh, you get to be one of the 42 people that we are going to be able to have in our space. So keep an eye out for all of that stuff. Um, I do want to talk a little, just very briefly, um, about something that has come up. And it may affect the way that we are putting our expression of ministry, we are putting our virtual world out there. Um, Facebook is changing their guidelines for their videos and what can be utilized and what can be put out there live. Um, It mostly comes down to music, and Facebook is basically going to discontinue allowing musicians and things to do concerts online through their, uh, through their, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, On Facebook. (laughs) Um, and so I started thinking, you know, we do so much music and all of this, and, and th- since they're changing, I don't know that Facebook is necessarily the direction that we're going to go in. So while we have been streaming live to Facebook, um, their, their new rules take play, uh, go into effect October 1st, so we, I may be discontinuing the live stream on Facebook. I'm not discontinuing the live stream on YouTube, because YouTube is, you know, they, they, they have their own structures and and policies and everything. But just if you are watching on Facebook, perhaps consider switching over to YouTube to watch the service on YouTube because I do think we're probably gonna end up discontinuing the live stream on Facebook as of October 1st. I do wanna say thank you to everybody who is here in the room for your presence, for allowing this magnificent unfoldment of the virtual service to take place. Karen, I wanna say thank you for participating and helping light the candles this morning. Such a blessing to have you here. I wanna say thank you to Wally and to Don for your technical expertise. I wanna say thank you to other people who are in the room, Laura and Kathy and Lydia for being here and you know holding the space and loving, prayerful consideration. I, of course, wanna say thank you to this magnificent band always living in gratitude. You know, gratitude as, uh, well, as Ernest Holmes says, an attitude of gratitude is most salutary and bespeaks the realization that we are now in heaven, and heaven is a state of mind. I also want to say thank you to Freddie, who has uh, turned into our camera operator, and say I'm grateful for you and your service to this virtual paradigm as well. I really want to say thank you to every single one of you who are watching online. Grateful to have you here. Grateful to know that we are connected as a spiritual family. And as we complete our time here, I'm going to invite you to share with me the prayer for protect, the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. I am that light. The love of God enfolds me. I am that love. The power of God protects me. I am that power. The presence of God watches over me. I am that presence. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever God is, I am. And so it is. Amen. Now there is peace on earth, for it has begun with me. Now there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God. Smallest of 
dreams and let your love show and you'll know what I mean it's the season well let your love fly like a bird on the wing and let your love find you to all living things and let your love shine and you'll know what I mean that's the reason there's a reason for the warm sweet nights and there's a reason for the candle lights must be the season when those love rights shine all around us. So let that wonder take you into space and lay you under its loving embrace. Just feel the thunder as it warms your face. You can't hold back. Oh, just let your love your love grow with the smallest of dreams and let your love show and you'll know what I mean at the season Whoa, let your love fly like a bird on the wing and let your love find you to all living things and let your love shine and you'll know what I mean that's the reason just let your love shine just let your love shine and you'll know what I mean that's the reason make it a magnificent week everyone